I need a preheat cup for an upcoming video, so let's make a couple. I like one inch pipe caps for this. Other sizes will work, but I like the aesthetics of the one inch cup. What I don't like is how tall they are, so let's shorten it to around half an inch. This is one of those jobs that you could go about a bunch of different ways and actually turned out to be one of the hardest parts of making the video. I thought I'd start with the drill press and an abrasive cutoff wheel, but copper is really soft, which makes it hard to cut with an abrasive wheel. I actually broke several wheels while I was working on this. So I bought this little slitting saw that turned out to be even slower than the abrasive wheel. It's also really hard to hold the pipe cap square to the cutter in the drill press, so you end up with an angled cut. So I decided to try a tubing cutter. To hold the cap, I made this mandrel, which fits tightly inside the cap. Since we have to drill a hole in the cap anyway, this hole serves to attach the cap to the mandrel. I carved the mandrel by hand. If you've got a lathe, you'll be way ahead. Actually, a lathe might be a good way to cut the cap down. After drilling, I went back to deburr the hole with a larger drill bit. This drill bit is definitely in the running for the world's worst. And then this happened. Yeah, that's not going to help us get a tight fit. My tubing cutter was just a little too small for this job, so I modified it a little to make it fit. The biggest challenge in cutting pipe caps with a tubing cutter is keeping the cut straight. If I were going to make a bunch of these, I'd build a jig to align the cutter. Since I'm only doing a few, I just toughed it out. The pipe I'm using for the intersection is quarter inch water line for a dishwasher. It's a little loose, but it works adequately well, and I've already got it. It cuts easily with the tubing cutter. I deburred the tube, and then spent some time making sure the inner pipe was the right height. A little long is okay, as long as we make it stick out the top and not the bottom. The fitment here needs to be pretty tight. Solder will fill a small gap, but not a very large one. It's important to clean the copper. Dirty, oxidized copper won't solder well. Now for a little flux. The flux helps the solder to stick. Today we're using some solder I found on the shelf. It might be silver solder, it might be electronic solder, who knows? I've used soft solder on preheat cups before and it was fine, but to be safe you'd always want to use silver solder. For heat, I've got my map gas torch. It's overkill for this job, and one of the mistakes I've made when soldering is to get the work too hot, which burns the flux and contaminates the work. Here I'm trying to sneak up on the right temperature. Heat a little and test. Add heat as needed. It turns out that the cup that the drill mangled had too much gap to solder. To tighten the joint, I took a small socket and pounded it into the end of the pipe to flare it out a bit. I flared the tube a little at a time until it was big enough to fill most of the gap. The solder filled the rest. A quick test shows that all the cups are watertight. So there you go, three preheat cups. This is a good beginner metalworking project. It only cost a couple bucks, and even making the mandrel, it shouldn't take more than an evening to complete. 